accordance with the open meeting law, the board states for the record that this meeting is being recorded by NORCAM and may be recorded by other local media. Please rise for the pledge. Good evening, everyone. Anyone here for public comment? How about any board member reports? No? Good. We're moving right along. Minutes. <laughs> Mr. Masseri, uh, Mr. O'Leary, minutes for November 19, 2018, regular and executive session. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the November 19, 2018 regular session minutes as written. Second. A motion is second by Mr. Masseri. Any discussion? None heard. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Executive session. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the November 19th executive session minutes as written. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Second. Schultz. I have a motion, a second by Mr. Schultz. Any more discussion? Any discussion, I should say. None heard. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Unanimous. Okay. Review the FY 2020 revenue and expense plan. I'll turn it over to Ms. Rourke. to briefly review um, a template that we are um, just basically starting to work on. We started at the beginning of November um, to break out some fixed costs between the town and the school. So to really drill down on those costs and um, segregate them, you know, and allocate them to the town and the school. Uh, so I will start with saying that once again this is just a template um, and also that the numbers that you'll see um, under the fixed cost section it basically are, are not 100 percent um, you know the true numbers they were this was a sample and we did our best to come up with estimates um, but until we have a full year of data we can't exactly have a exact number for say health insurance so we're taking you know the average health insurance bill with the average um, enrollees and then we're doing that um, out for a year but you know this is just an exercise for us to see um, how we should proceed and if we should proceed with this template uh, this was reviewed at the financial planning team um, with the school department as well at the beginning of November. So quickly, um, the top section of for revenue has really not changed much. I will point out the areas that have changed. Um, one of the items that you'll see highlighted here is new growth. Uh, new growth is highlighted only for the reason that new growth um, and the tax rate hasn't been set yet. So um, this will be updated once the tax rate is set to uh, reflect the numbers that were entered and submitted to the Department of Revenue part, uh, with part of the tax recap process. Um, so again, um, for FY20, the numbers that you'll see for um, new growth and uh, debt exclusions, these have been reviewed when we reviewed a five-year uh, revenue plan. So these um, have not changed. Uh, we reviewed the new growth figure and the increase in new growth last year with um, uh, the Barry property being sold and Pulte Homes um, and their build-out plan. Going on to state aid, um, again, 
These are town meeting um, state aid figures. They did change a, a very minor uh, once the final state budget was um, approved. So those figures you will see updated the next time we review the revenue plan. We have some moderate um, increases like we do annually for each fiscal year. Um, and you'll notice that on this revenue plan, we're only showing FY19 and FY20. We're not going out um, you know, to 2021, 22, 23, just because this was a template, a rough draft, um, and just kind of seeing what, what you know, would work and how, how it worked. If you could, before you go back up, uh, back down there, to the char, the... Uh, okay. I think it was further up. No, I, I'm sorry. Down, my apologies. Keep going. Yes. And where was it? Was it under state aid? Yeah, right, right there. Sorry. Um, Charter tuition reimbursement. Yes. That one. So we don't. Right, that that's the one. So could you just explain again why? Sure. So this is actually um, a new charge that we had just started seeing um, from uh, or new reimbursement from the state. So um, one of our uh, residents is going to a charter school, and the state reimburses us for that um, and then on the flip side we pay a state and county charge as well a piece of that so th it's a two-part uh, piece um, I don't know how long I'm not sure if the school department told us uh, what year the student was in I'm not sure um, we can find out yeah. more information on that but uh, it is a newer um, revenue in the grand scheme of things it is but I, I pointed out because it, it may, it's in our template today, but it may not be in our template in the next maybe three years from now. Correct. Exactly. Yes. Yep. Good Mr. point. Missouri. Mr. Missouri. Yes. Liz, uh, I want to go back to the uh, new growth. Sure. For a minute. Uh, I thought we had talked about on the new growth having two lines, one for the normal regular new growth and one for the very, uh, the Pulte property. Sure, Just yes. so we have some idea of. Yes, and so once, as I mentioned, um, once the tax rate is set, this revenue plan is going to be updated to reflect the um, tax recap. And Polte um, is part of the new growth figure for FY19, represents Polte. And so that is when it will get broken out. Um, there will be a line because okay. we didn't have new growth uh, prior and prior to, for Polte prior to FY19. Understood. Moving on to um, local receipts. If you all recall, um, through last year's budget process, um, we, we spoke about the um, trash fee and, and we had to increase the trash fee in order to um, you know, stay current with what the uh, disposal and recycling and uh, sanitation companies are charging in the market and we did a one-year extension um, on our sanitation contracts so what we did for FY19 was the increase over our annual budgeted um, amount for trash fee we segregated that increase directly to the sanitation budget it didn't go into the revenue mix it didn't get split 66 34 percent between the school and the towns and so for this exercise, we just zeroed it out. Um, and we've talked in financial planning of creating an enterprise fund, which is a self-sustaining fund similar to the water enterprise fund, the parks and rec enterprise fund, to creating a sanitation enterprise fund because the trash fee pays for the sanitation budget. And um, with increasing costs uh, across the nation for disposal and recycling, we feel that this is a direction that we are going to have to go in, go to. Um, I don't know that we will do it for FY20, but just for this exercise, it's been pulled out. So that's just one area that I wanted to make a note um, that is different under local receipts. I think we need to have further discussion on it, um, but it's definitely an area that we need to closely uh, monitor and look at. But 
you know, when we zero it out, we talk about zeroing it out, we, we are not holding the schools harmed. We're making it right with the schools by making adjustments in other areas. So. Correct. That is correct. Okay. So going down to other financing sources, um, you will note that there are so quite a few changes um, between FY19 and FY20. Uh, um, and I will note the areas of where uh, we have pulled out uh, certain revenue sources. So the Debt Service Stabilization Fund, we always um, have to wait to see you know, how much we're going to have available from free cash to put into the debt service stabilization fund. We also have to wait to see, um, you know, how much the snow and ice deficit's going to be, which then makes free cash available if it's under what we have held for uh, free cash to cover the snow and ice deficit. Um, and I also want to note that 1.2 million, a transfer that we made for FY19, was the max that we could make for FY19 because the debt service stabilization fund is to pay for debt service or to purchase capital items, similar to what we've discussed with the sale of town-owned land. And um, our non-exempt debt service um, budget is uh, just at 1.2 million. The Capital Improvement Planning Committee keeps the debt service uh, pretty level and does not uh, increase, uh, does not want to increase it annually over that amount. So we cannot go higher than 1.2 million um, from a transfer out. So right now it's at 300,000. That's our, pretty much our starting point for the past two years. Going down, um, another area that we um, have reduced would be transfer from cemetery. Um, transfer from perpetual care, uh, transfer from ambulance reserve, transfer from water indirect, and transfer from recreation indirect. Those have all um, been removed from this exercise and we will see them below. Moving on to page two for expenses, fixed costs. So some items um, that have been moved around we will review, um, but many of the items that were under this section of fixed costs have, have stayed um, as they were. Uh, the only piece that is different from this top section would be we had a total employee benefits line under uh, fixed costs in this section, which is calculated below, and we'll review that as those are all segregated below. And other employee, um, other post-employment benefits uh, moved up from the employee benefits detail to fixed costs. Because that is shared between um, the town and school. It, it has to do with um, uh, current employees and paying for their, you know, post-employment health insurance and life insurance. So under employee benefits detail, we've broken out um, what was just listed as county retirement. It's now listed as uh, school and town uh, county retirement. And you can see the pieces that each the school and town um, make up of, of the total uh, three point almost eight million uh, for FY19. And again, FY20 is an estimate um, that we, you know, basically took the three point eight million um, and took uh, seven or six and a half percent, I believe, um, and then broke it out between school and town. Going um, down as well, school workers comp, and it should say town workers comp. Um, we took the total workers comp and we broke it out by um, what uh, Maya tells us. They give us an actual breakdown for school and town. And then on the town side, we have to add in public safety, so police and fire, uh, to that figure. That's not part of Maya, it's another agency. Um, town employment um, security, which is the town's um, small budget for unemployment. And then we have school health insurance, town health insurance, um, 
<clears throat> and in these figures is both active and retirees. And again, these are estimates. Um, the enrollee numbers you know, do fluctuate, um, but this is breaking down what it is right now. So I th the reason we try to take this approach was to try to just uh, dig down a little deeper into the budgets to have a full understanding of all the numbers. And I'll just give you an example. Is, you know, for the town, we know we have to live within our budgets down to a line item. In the schools, they get to go to a top line item. So that means if they find themselves with some extra money within their budget and they want to have the flexibility to hire more people, they certainly can do that. But we also know that if you could scroll that back up to the top there so we can look at the, no, to the school county retirement. Mm -hmm. You know, we ran into this a little bit last year. They hired someone that we didn't quite see in their budget, but they didn't exceed their budget, but it had a negative effect on the county retirement. So every time they hire a staff, there is a, uh, an, a hit on county retirement. So we want to make sure we watch that and we control it by in the same with the town. We stay within what we're budgeting. Mr. Masseri. I think the breakout is a great idea. Uh, is the, are the school-related items being moved to the school budget, or are they still coming off the top before the budget, uh, as we've done in the past 100 years or so? You follow me? No, I'm yeah. not tracking with that, but this is... I understand what you're saying, Bob, and we'll see that um, on the bottom there's a breakout, so I, we'll go over that. Basically what happens is the school um, has their total revenue number available prior to these costs, and then these costs um, come out, and then and they have total available. The same goes I, for the town. I guess my question is, in years past, yes. we had right off the top of the budget, we took all these expenses. Mm -hmm. And then what was left was broken to town and school on a percentage basis. Correct. Does that remain? No. So what is happening now is, or in this example, this model, is you'll see that the total revenue amount up here, so if we're looking at, say, FY19 of the $65,700,000 um, approximately, round numbers, they're, they're, that sixty-five seven is then... Um, we take the ten million one eighty three, which is right here, which is the what we're calling fixed costs. That comes off of the sixty five um, seven hundred, and then we're splitting the difference. So I'll show you the calculation below. So the school and the town start with a higher number, but then we are responsible for these employee benefits details. They're oh, each. They're each. That was my question. Yes. So they're each allocated, but yep. so. The fixed cost section, which is you know the capital improvement plan, the other post-employment benefits, general liability insurance, that is coming off the top, but the employee benefit detail um, totals are not coming off the top. So everyone is starting with a higher figure, but every the town and the school is then responsible for these benefit for those costs. Items directly. Yes. So does that impact the percentage breakdown that the school and the town have been? You will see, um, and it's uh, very close. Um, I think it was, it, was it shy of, we'll see the, the detail, but it was yeah. very close okay. to the 66, 34 percent. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So what, what items come right off the top now? The, the items debt like, service? So yes. Um, the cap some of the debt service belongs to school. Yes, so we talked about, out, so, so we, we talk talked about, about that. Yeah. Um, we we didn't do that for we this didn't, model. We didn't drill down that deep. But we okay. can. We can. We, um, we we're have. We're trying to take it in baby steps, Bob. But no, we certainly mine can. is a question, not mm -hmm. suggesting what you do. I'm oh, just absolutely. Trying to understand what you're doing. Yes, okay. um, debt service. Um, we have it broken out by you know general government. Um, we have it uh, exempt school. You know we have it all broken out, so we could do that. Um, but we weren't deciding to do that in, okay. you know, in this starting point. I, the same goes for um, uh, school general liability insurance and town general liability insurance. We have that breakout, what is allocated to the school and what's allocated to the town. Same with um, 
retirements. There's a Warren article at every town meeting that's for retirements. And we have that number is for both the town and the school, but we the school knows what their number is because their employees um, have to tell them who's retiring. So they have a figure. So we could get down to an even uh, more granular level, but for the starting point, we just wanted to kind of get things um, you know, template it out and see how things actually worked and see how close it actually was to what the current 6634 split is. Right. And it's um, very close of to what what it, right. you the know. The retirements in the past have been a war on it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Right. And the school doesn't pay a retiree out all in one shot like the town does. I think they do it over a three-year period, so there's a residual carried into the next two years. Yes, but they know that figure, you know, okay. ahead of time and everything, yeah. so. <clears throat> okay. So moving on, um, again, school health insurance, town health insurance, school life insurance, town life insurance, school Medicare, town Medicare. Again, these are estimates. Um, we don't have a whole fiscal year, you know, under our belt. <coughs> but we're basing upon averages and trends. Um, and then we have town public safety disability and town uninsured medical. And then we come down to the distribution. And as I was saying, you have the total general fund revenue of 65699000 And then you're taking the fixed costs, which I mentioned are the debt service, the capital improvement plan, the regional school assessment, the general liability insurance, other post-employment benefits, that is coming off the top, which then leaves $55 million five to be split between the town and the school. Then we have the town's total allocation, and we have the town's um, employee benefit costs, which are in red, and they total $4.9 million approximately. Then we have add backs to the town. The trash fee, which I mentioned, we pulled out. The uh, transfer from cemetery account, which uh, offsets the cemetery um, operating budget to maintain the cemetery. Same with um, the transfer from per perpetual care, that offsets the cemetery budget to maintain the cemetery. Transfer from ambulance reserve, that offsets the fire department EMS budget to run the ambulances. Transfer from water indirect costs, this is the water enterprise fund paying the town for, you know, processing their payroll, for their health insurance, for their county retirement, for their Medicare. Those type of things are, are what is an indirect cost. And the same for um, transfer from recreation indirect costs. So that's a total of $2.2 million that's added back to the town. And then you can see that we get to... Um, total town salaries and expenses. Moving down to the total school allocation, we took the 55 million and gave them 66%, and then we um, took their expenses, and those totaled six million, and that left them with 30 million 580. And their school budget for FY19 was 30 million 746. So it was a difference of 165,796. So if you see my note here, difference in revenue available to the school would need to increase their 66% to 66% uh, to 99. So it is not that far off of a difference of what we are already doing with the 66-34% split. <coughs> Okay, and then in fairness, revenue that has been generated from trash and things like it are going now to be paid 100% into trash, and they're not part of the 30, 60% of the past. Correct. That's correct. Yes. That's All what right. we're trying to achieve here. Yeah. And that, like I said earlier, and what we're also trying to achieve is if we're going to make decisions within our budgets, we also have to stick within our fixed costs that you know, before we were all pulled together, but now we can have the insight to where our fixed costs are and where theirs are, and they need to stay within theirs, and we need to stay within ours. So I'm scratching my head 
knowing what you've done and still coming out so close to the school budget. So what am I missing? Well, exactly to your point, though, um, the starting point for rev total revenue was less than what it really was. So, so we pulled out the state aid that comes into the town for a school, Chapter 70. Mm -hmm. yeah. 100 percent of that is allocated to the school budget. No. No. Nope. No. We're not proposing that. We're not. We're not. No. I, I don't understand the math. Help me, Steve. <coughs> Mr. Gilberto. So I believe when you and I looked at the, the breakdown, there was a significant variance in the benefits and the allocation of benefits yes. that contributed to the kind of balancing out. Maybe yes. that would answer Mr. Masseri's question. Percentage-wise? Yes. 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 So if we go up to um, benefits, here we go, employee benefits, maybe it would help if I show you, um, it, it is small, but it's, um, So our town meeting health insurance budget was 6.1 million. And the school makes up 3.8 of that 6.1. So they have a larger percentage of, of that piece of the pie. The same thing for county retirement, they have a larger, they have a large percentage, not a larger, but a large percentage. Yeah, I understand that. Um, so Mike and I went through each category to see what the driving force was to make them so close. Um, as well as school Medicare um, and town, town Medicare, you can see that they have a larger percentage of the Medicare, overall Medicare budget. So that's how it comes out so close is that they, uh, the school, um, plays a larger percentage in some large budget numbers. All right, I'll look at this closer. Please do. We welcome the feedback. But again, we were just trying to look at a different format this year to try to track the you know, budget to actual as we go through the year and try to stick within our budgets collectively. <coughs> so as far as the school teachers retire, yep. where is that? It's not here. It's 100% no. um, employee. They yeah. pay the They pay it. It is not employer paid. One thing to keep in mind too, Bob, when you're doing your review is that if you compare, I think one thing would be important to do would be to maybe take the town meeting warrant, um, the front page of the revenue, so that you know what our, our starting points were. These numbers here are estimates, but they are based upon um, three-month averages. Yeah, the historical so just, data. Yeah. Exactly. I'm not criticizing what has been done so much as trying to Stand. No, no, how, I understand. How the numbers came right. so close. I'm just saying number-wise, like the 3.792 for FY19 for school health insurance, at the end of FY19, that 3.79 could end up being, uh, it could be 3.5, but it could be 3.9. It, it's just based upon three, a three-month average, you know what I mean? So. Understood. Okay. Any other questions for Ms. Rourke? Any, end up, go back, look at it. If you have some feedback for us, some mm -hmm. suggestions. Definitely, uh, I would we welcome, welcome it. it. You know, we're just trying to you know, sort of build better controls, better monitoring, better ways to track things, uh, better way to keep score. And that's what I think we have here. We have a little more insight and try to really control that fixed cost. Now we have a really good handle on the fixed cost. Well, at least I hope we do. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Next we have on the agenda is to review and discuss the potential real estate opportunity at 217 Main Street. I think I don't think we really have anything this evening, so we're going to pass over that item. Um, and that's going to bring us into licenses and renewals. Mr. O'Leary, are you sure you don't need a bottle of water out of there? This is fine. Bottle of wine, maybe? <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I move to renew the following common vigilant licenses to expire December 31st, 2019, 712 regulatory department requirements. Andrea's House of Pizza, 
Beyond Bagels, Inc., Captain Pizza, China Cuisine, Dunkin' Donuts, Holy Donut, Dunkin' Donuts, Shauna Donuts, Dunkin' Donuts, No Read, or No Red, let's do that. Um, I had to say No Read. McDonald's Restaurant, Mike's Famous Roast Beef and Pizza, Papa Gino's, Starbucks Coffee, and Lobster Claw. Second. I have a motion and a second. Second. Uh, by Mr. I got a second by Mr. Schultz already. Oh, okay. Thank you, Mr. Masseri. Um, any discussion? None heard. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. I just a quick question for Jane. Are we missing anybody from that group of licenses that you're waiting on? You got everyone? No. No one late? No, people are late. No people are late. No, people no, are late. Oh, people, people are late. Are yeah. Late. Okay. How many? And we're also waiting for other things, too. Internally. The licenses. Internally. Internally, yeah. we're waiting for, for you. Yep. Okay. Continue to the appointments. Then. Mr. Chairman, I move to renew the following common vigilar all alcohol license to expire December 31st, 2019, 712 regulatory department requirements, China Cuisine. Second. I have a motion, a second by Mr. Schultz. Any discussion? None heard. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Mr. Chairman, I move to renew the following automatic amusement device license to expire December 31st, 2019, 712 regulatory department requirements. Andrea's House of Pizza, Papa Gino's. Second. Motion is second by Mr. Schultz. Any more dis any discussion? None heard. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Now we go to appointments. Let's see. Mr. Chairman, that was let me do this. Get some more here. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, I move to appoint Barbara Stats as the state ethics uh, liaison for a term to expire December 31st, 2019. Motion is second by Mrs. Minupelli. Any discussion? None heard. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Mr. Chair, do we have a um, class? Do we the class one licenses? Are class they one, two, and three. I'm putting at the end because oh. I'll be recusing myself. Uh, so I took the liberty of shuffling the deck. Gotcha. And I can pass it off to you. Mr. Chairman, I move to appoint Marianne McKay as town treasurer for a term to expire December 31st, 2019. Second. I have a motion and a second by Mrs. Mignopelli. Any discussion? None heard. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Mr. Chairman. I move to place a nomination the following names for reappointment as members of the Conservation Commission for terms to expire December 31st, 2001. There are three openings, two people applying. Actually, one of the openings would be an unexpired term, correct, Jane? Yes. Two, two, oh, two, two openings. And Tom Romeo's is at the same time? No, different date. I believe have to I believe it's two openings. There's two openings for the full term, and there will be one unexpired term. So, uh, terms to expire December 31st, 2001. Lori Michener, incumbent. Jonathan Cody, incumbent. Uh, Motion, do I have a second? Second. Second by Ms. Mignopelli. Any discussion? Mr. Chairman. Yes. Uh, this liaison, again, we put out a call for uh, some assistance on the uh, Conservation Commission. Uh, so the two incumbents here have uh, are seeking reappointment. We appreciate their uh, willing, willingness to serve, but we still have one unexpired term. And since we put the call out, I think we've had three or four people respond, maybe five, which is terrific. So we appreciate it. And at our next meeting, I will be offering a recommendation for filling the unexpired term and may even uh, recommend to the board that we consider some associate members uh, to the commission. But for tonight, um, Lori Bishner and Jonathan Cody, both incumbents, and I would recommend uh, their reappointment. Thank you. And thank you for the community for responding to our request and our call for help. Much appreciated. So, uh, motion. Shall we do a, a roll call vote on, on appointments? Yes. So, Mr. Prisco? 
Lori Minchner and Jonathan Cody. Okay. For me, Mrs. Minipelli. Lori Minchner and Jonathan Cody. Mr. Schultz. Uh, Ms. Minchner and Mr. Cody. Mr. Mr. Minchner and Mr. Cody. Yeah, Mr. Larry. Lori Minchner and Jonathan Cody. Okay. That makes it unanimous. Chairman, I move to place a nomination of the following names for reappointment or appointment to the Hillview Commission for a term to expire December 31st, 2020. Uh, two openings, all three, two. Uh, George Stack, the incumbent, Louis DeFranzo, the incumbent, Daniela Claiborne, Peter Antonucci, Robert Gilchrist, David Lee. Second. Yes, uh, I'll be recommending uh, the two incumbents, Mr. George Stack and Mr. Lou DeFranzo. Uh, Mr. Stack has been the, uh, he's been on the commission since inception, approximately 30 years. Uh, served as chairman numerous times, is the current chairman, and is passionate uh, about the Hillview Commission and is doing a fantastic job and deserves reappointment. Mr. DeFranzo just completed his first term. Uh, for three years, uh, he's a, an attorney, and uh, through the negotiations of the new contract, uh, negotiations with the uh, car carts, uh, golf carts, and all the rest, uh, his uh, service has been invaluable, and I again would recommend uh, his reappointment. So these are only two-year terms? No, they're three-year terms. There should be three years. Well, it says December. Yeah, maybe I'm right. doing the wrong math. December. Thirty-first. Thirty-first. Yeah. It says two thousand and twenty, yeah, but it should I, be twenty-one. It should be twenty-one, I believe. So, if you want to maybe modify the motion. Yes, indeed. Uh, again, Mr. Chairman, uh, it's a scrivener's error, so that uh, move to place the nomination of the following names for appointment, reappointment to the Hillview Commission for a term to expire December thirty-first, two thousand twenty-one. Two openings. Second. Motion is second. And we already got the names. So there's a roll call vote. So Mr. O'Leary? Uh, Mr. Stack and Mr. DeFranzo. Mr. Masseri? Mr. Stack and Mr. DeFranzo. Mr. Schultz? Mr. Stack and Mr. DeFranzo. Mr. Minupelli? Mr. Stack and Mr. DeFranzo. And the chair votes Mr. Stack and Mr. DeFranzo. Thank you for your continued service. Gentlemen, much appreciate it. And the course, I think, was the best I've ever seen it in all the years. I've been in town this year, so it's certainly going in the right direction. The Again, investments. It's, uh, not without challenges, and uh, the no. commission as a whole, particularly these two members, but the commission as a whole is. Really but the investments up. they've made, and I know that it was difficult for them to make them, but they're paying dividends. So, thank you. Board of Appeals. Yeah. One second. Mr. Chairman, I move to place a nomination the following names for reappointment or appointment as member of the Board of Appeals for a term to expire December 31st, 2021. There's one opening. Joseph Keyes, the incumbent, Matthew D'Angelo, Laura Matolo, Clancy Main, Stephen Lecti, Amit Subarani, uh, Mark D. Simone, and Kerry Antonuccio. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? I'll defer to the liaison. Yep. Um, I would recommend Mr. Keyes, who's the incumbent and attorney in town and has been on the board for a number of years. Okay. It's a roll call vote. Mr. O'Leary. Mr. Keyes. Mr. Masseri. Mr. Keyes. Mr. Schultz. Mr. Keyes. Mr. Minipelli. And the chair is going to vote Clancy Main. Mr. Ch 
Chairman, at this point in time, I will um, turn the following motions to be made over to uh, Mr. Schultz. Uh, this is for uh, Class 1, Class 2, and Class 3 licenses, automobile licenses. I'd like the record to show that uh, I will be uh, recusing myself from any discussion and will be abstaining in the vote as I have a family member who holds a Class 2 license and uh, therefore I will be abstaining. Uh, thank you, Mr. O'Leary. Mr. Chairman, I move to renew the following Class 1 licenses to expire January 1, 2020, subject to all regulatory department requirements. That's Brian Duchak, DBA National Sales. A motion and a second. Any discussion? None heard. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And one abstention. Uh, class 2 license. Mr. Chairman, I move to renew the following Class 2 licenses to expire January 1, 2020, subject to all regulatory department requirements. A&J Motors, Inc., Brian Duchak, DBA National Sales, and P&T Auto Sales. I have a motion. I have a second by Mr. Masseri. Any discussion? None heard. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. And one abstain. Four in favor, one abstention. Class three. Mr. Chairman, I move to renew the following class three license to expire January 1, 2019, subject to all regulatory department requirements. Brian Duchak, DBA National Sales. Second. I have a motion, a second by Mr. Masseri. Any discussion? None heard. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. One abstention. And then that's, that's, it, those. that's it. We yep. go to um, legal bills, right? Mr. Chairman, I move to approve legal bills for October 2018 in the amount of $10,717.75 as follows. Copeland and Page, PC General, $8,836.75. Copeland and Page PC Labor, $1,881, total $10,717.75. Second. I have a motion. I have a second. Any discussion? None heard. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Approve and sign the integrated contract with the firefighters, local 1857. Mr. Gilberto. Mr. Chairman, through you, this is an integrated contract which takes the terms from the most recent memorandum of agreement between the town and the union, which was uh, ratified um, almost a year ago in December of 2017, it takes those terms and makes them part of the um, actual contract between the town and the union, it provides a, a single point where all of the changes that were made in that last MOA, memorandum of agreement, can be um, made part of the, the overall contract. Um, my uh, recommendation to the board would be to uh, ratify and sign. Okay. We have a motion in the packet, I believe. Oh, we yes, do, Mr. 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 Chairman. I move to ratify and sign the integrated contract <coughs> between the town of North Reading and the North Reading Firefighters Local 1857 for the period July 1st, 2016 through June 30th, 2020. I have a motion. I have a second by Mr. Minupelli. Mr. Gilparo. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Through you, just to make clear, there are no new benefits or uh, wage adjustments included in this uh, agreement. Um, those changes were uh, implemented after the memorandum of agreement was approved last December. So this is purely administrative? Yeah. Correct. In structure, okay. So I have a motion. I have a second. Mr. Any Chairman. more discussion? Yep. Yes. Um, I voted against the initial ratification of the uh, memorandum of agreement, so therefore I will not be voting in favor of this motion. However, that being said, I am extremely pleased that we have it integrated in one document, and uh, I applaud uh, the administration's effort and the union's effort for coming together and getting together with uh, an integrated agreement. And I think uh, Mr. Collins put a tremendous amount of time into this as well, I believe. That's correct. He and Chief Stats. Thank you. Nope. It's a great effort. Lab. We're in a routine of doing that because we've seen that come back and cause some administrative uh, challenges for us in the past. So I thank both the town folks and the union folks for getting that done. So if I don't have any more comments, I'll take a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. No. 
And Four to by, one. By the way, Mr. Chairman, there are two copies for the members to sign. I'll pass them around. Thank you. And next, I think we have the Town Administrator's report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Curbside yard waste collection occurred this past Saturday, December 1st, and will occur again on Saturday, December 15th. Information is up on the website, and I attached it to my report as well. I will note for uh, the public uh, for the curbside yard waste pickup on Saturday the 15th, all items must be curbside by 6.30 a.m. Uh, we also extended yard waste drop-off uh, due to the late, uh, the early snowfall, excuse me, uh, and late end of the um, yard waste cleanup season uh, through this past uh, weekend. Uh, we were open both Saturday and Sunday, the regular hours, but the facility is now closed for the season. Uh, there is one remaining opportunity to get rid of yard waste, and that is through the curbside pickup a week from this coming Saturday. Uh, as was mentioned earlier, uh, there is an urgent need for Conservation Commission candidates. Um, I did uh, provide a notice for the town website and put it, uh, uh, submitted it to the transcript as well. I appreciate their assistance, and we very pleased with the response that's come back. Again, for anybody who is interested or anybody who is further interested, please contact my office at 978-357-5225. If you wish to learn more about the commission itself, please contact the conserva conservation office at 978-357-5247. The meetings are generally the second Tuesday of the month at 6 o'clock p.m. at Town Hall. Residents are reminded that Town Hall will be open until 6 o'clock p.m. on Monday, December 17th. The library will open at 9 o'clock a.m. that day. Town Hall, the library, and the Senior Center will be closed on Monday and Tuesday, December 24th and 25th in observance of Christmas. I wish to recognize Adam Johnson upon his swearing in as a North Reading police officer. I included information relative to uh, Officer Johnson's background. He comes to us from the University of Massachusetts at Boston, where he was a police officer. And finally, I was honored to attend the Eagle Scout Court of Honor for Jacob Ankry, Rudy Carlson, Daniel Mannion, and Maxwell Murphy on Saturday, November 24th. Uh, each of the individu individuals was presented a certificate of recognition on behalf of the board, and congratulations to them. Thank you for their efforts in support of our community. And with that, Mr. Chairman, that concludes my comments. Just a question or request, I should say. So with the upcoming holidays falling on a Tuesday, and I assume that's going to have a change in our, and I know this has been posted once before, regards the uh, trash pickup. So Yes. So we, trash pickup, uh, assuming there's no weather interruption, would be delayed one day. So it normally occurs on Tuesday, would in this case be Tuesday, December 25th, and Tuesday, January 1st that are in question. It would be delayed one day to Wednesday, Wednesday, December 26th, and Wednesday, January 2nd. All items must be curbside by 6.30 a.m. So it would be good if we made sure we got the, the push on the news and announcements mm -hmm. from our town website out to folks, letting them know that. Just refresh their memories. And I also think we need some kind of a public statement on now the winter's here in the event that we run into a snowstorm during the time that we have trash pickup. If your trash doesn't get picked up, we have to make sure we communicate. We had a lot of lessons learned from last winter, mm -hmm. and I just want folks to remember to leave their trash out there. If they missed you, they're going to come back most right. I mean, they're going to come back the next day. That's what happened last year. Uh, but I just think maybe we need to have a public announcement on that, an official announcement from maybe the DPW director, just so the public knows. You know, once if they don't get the trash picked up on a Tuesday normally because of the snow impact. It will be picked up on a Wednesday or the day following. Uh, Mr. Please. Chairman, through you, I'm happy to talk with the director about getting some publicity out there uh, on it. Um, I, I can't stress enough, if your trash is not collected, it, it's very important to contact the Department of Public Works to let us know that it, in fact, has not been um, corrected. Um, there's a number of ways you can reach the town hall. Um, but the phone number that will get you to the uh, administrative office of the DPW is 978-357-5227. It's very important, uh, and I, I know in this day and age, email is a great way to communicate, but the, the most efficient way for us to get the information and get it over to JRM so that they're logging and we are aware of the missed areas is, is that phone call 
um, and certainly leave a message if you don't reach somebody. Sometimes the phones can be overwhelmed if there's a big stretch of space that's missed by JRM. But we, I really encourage folks to A, place that phone call, and B, leave it curbside. Um, yeah. That's the second most important thing. Uh, that way, no one has to endure the frustration of yeah. uh, the truck drives by and your trash is not curbside and therefore doesn't get picked up. Um, this is the most difficult time of year for us. Um, yeah. It's um, it starts with the challenges associated with it getting dark so early, so the day is, by definition, shortened for JRM to get th the work done in town. And then, uh, secondly, um, the heavier um, volume of, of trash in particular associated with holiday celebrations and then uh, exchange of gifts just really taxes the resources. So I really, you know, I, I, I appreciate you bringing that up. I think it's very important. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing I, I will note, and this is going to come up in a future discussion, is you know, we have gotten a lot of feedback from the industry that for a successor contract, uh, we should expect to be looking at multiple days of pickup in town. And by that I mean it, certain, depending upon your geographic area, you would have a, a potentially a different day than perhaps another geographic area might be. But one of the benefits of that is it gives us another bite at the apple, so to speak, to address any missed pickups because JRM is back in town again. So that is a benefit that will help, uh, that we expect would help alleviate some of the challenges. Uh, but again, thank you for bringing that up. Yeah, it's important. <coughs> and we'll do our best. Uh, I know Mr. Schultz and I, we try to monitor what's happening in North Reading, a social media site. So if folks have questions. We try to do our best at answering them, but it, you are spot on. If they can make the phone call, it's it's, a, it's certainly a greater help than us trying to do it through social media. Sure. Anything else? No, sir. Mr. O'Leary. Um, first of all, I'd like to note the, uh, the passing of a former town employee, Lois Chikorik, uh, a longtime um, public servant in the uh, Department of Public Works, who retired a few years back, but a true lady and. Uh, wonderful woman and wonderful uh, employee and great member, contributing member of the community here. And she just passed away this Sunday, so we're gonna offer uh, our condolences uh, to her family. And I know that there are a lot of employees in Town Hall that used to work with Lois will be sad, sad to hear that she, she passed. Um, the only other thing is, uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm wondering if it's uh, time for us to take a look at uh, plastic bag situation in town, the banning of plastic bags. I mean, we haven't really addressed the situation, but it appears, based upon my recent shopping around the area, that a lot of the communities around us and a lot of communities throughout the Commonwealth uh, are addressing the situation, and I've already implemented a um, plastic bag ban, and I, I think uh, environmentally, I mean, part of the problem with our recycling here is that people put it in the recycling, and it's a problem with recycling plants. Uh, along with environmentally, it's not a not a good idea. So uh, maybe it's time uh, for a New Year's resolution where we should uh, uh, charge with the administration with the uh, task of at least uh, surveying what other communities around us have done, how they've implemented it, and the impact. But I mean, I know a lot of the local chain stores, area regional stores, some communities have uh, re the plastic bag bans and others do not. So it's. Uh, I just think it's uh, it's time for us to, to take a look at it. I'm certainly very familiar with it. Uh, owning a business in the city, we have to and implement that's it. Coming in, right, no, this, this it's coming in. it's effective. So it's effective now, right? Um, we have we have a little grace period right now, and we also also have the ability to use what we've already purchased, which is good. But it's coming. Um, the good part of it is yes, it's a it's good for the environment. The very negative part is especially on the small businesses, it's extremely expensive. Um, my bags are costing me at least 13 cents a bag now. And, you know, those costs in our community are going to have to get passed on to the consumers. But I, I understand it's for the greater good, but uh, I certainly think that we should. I've been waiting for this subject to come around. I assume at some point it would come around. Um, I'm not so sure I'm bought in on it because I've, I'm seeing it from a different perspective. But it's certainly something that has to probably get addressed because it's happening across the whole country. Um, but I certainly would hope that everyone would take um, and just, you know, try to step back from it and look at it from an economic standpoint for our small businesses. This will be an impact any way you look at it. But if you certainly want to take the lead on it, and I'm sure the town administrator, amongst the budgets and everything else we have going on, maybe you could take a, 
I mean, I, there's so many communities I think implemented it around us. It's got to be at least four I know of right now. But I certainly like the idea of, you know, brushing off what somebody else has already created and that we take it from there and maybe fine tune it to fit our community. Uh, no need to reinvent the wheel on it. It's everywhere. A um, matter of fact, I believe Brad Jones' office has some information on on this as well that I would probably start there because I believe several of his communities have already implemented it as a suggestion. No, I, I just figured I'd bring it up and see what the consensus of the board was, whether we want to uh, charge the administration with looking into it or not. I, for one, think it's, it's time. Malden doing it, Mrs. Minupelli? Reading is. Reading is. Yeah. Because I wanted to stop and jump Reading and walked out with paper bags and everything fell out of my bag, up all bags. That's so I'm personally not a fan of it. I think it hurts the small business and No, you can have plastic. You, you can. Well, they're, you can they're, but they're very expensive. The reusable bags. Yeah. I mean I use the reusable bags and they go to market basket. Yeah. You know, I so wasn't I mean, a big market fan basket in Middleton, you know, reason. isn't subject to it, but we bring our reusable bags anyway. Mm -hmm. Reading. Yeah. I just think it's subject to it. The cost gets passed on to the little guy. That's and that, but they're forced to pass it on to the consumer, and, That's what I mean. and the yeah. consumers do. They do get upset. There's no doubt. I mean, another thirteen cents on top of everything else. But and the consumers are also going to have to deal with the yep. environmental impact of you know, yep. continued use. Great. Anything else? Well, I don't know. Do we, do we have a consensus yet or not? No. Nope. Oh, sorry. Yes, no. Mr. Masseri. I, I think that uh, waiting for. Uh, discussions or whatever options we have for trash pickup will provide us some information and we should wait and see what our options are there before we make any other changes. Okay. Mr. Kelly? I think it's a good idea to move forward with it. We already know it's impacting everything from the ability to recycle to the cost factor to the fact that it doesn't degrade and it's a lousy product anyway. Your groceries fall all over the place in the plastic bags and out of them anyway. But Yeah, and as far as you know the, the new trash contract isn't gonna have any impact as to as to the the use of, of plastic bags because we can't recycle them. Actually it may help us if we implement it before then they actually may look upon it even more favorably in our pricing because now they know what they're picking up. Right. They know that certain things are gonna be outlawed in the town of North Reading they're not gonna be and they're not going to have to address it when it gets to their facility. So I actually think the opposite of it. I hate to say it. I know Mr. Gilberto, you and your staff have a tremendous amount going on, especially it's budget season and mixed of all the other things that we're doing. But uh, I think it it's a very logical thing to look into now prior to signing on or sending out an RFP for any trash. Um, I think this is probably the, the right time to do it. And it's certainly, I think, would be more favorable to us for the contractor. So, okay. So I think that you got the majority of the board sure. would like you to, you know, kick the tires on this and see if you can bring us back some information. Um, and you certainly have plenty of communities around you that can share the information. And I, again, I do believe Brad Jones' office has some really good information on this. Thank you. Yeah, so we'll follow up. Uh, through uh, DPW to see what options we have available to us. Okay. Thank you for I'll bringing say. it up, Mr. O'Leary. It's very good. Mr. Masseri. Just uh, an update on water sewer. Uh, our next meeting is uh, Wednesday, the uh, next Wednesday at 1. The focus has been on trying to nail down the location for the uh, chlorine dispensing for Main Street because without having that location they can't file the FBIR so that's focused uh, we're going to get back in contact when they end over to start talking about sewer they've been kind of predisposed with their gas crisis so we hope to get that started soon that's today. great that's great progress and it's really good news and I hope that it, it comes to fruition I think the Getting the biggest hurdle is getting them to have a a warm feeling towards the idea. That's that's well, we good. We got to keep the pressure on uh, getting 
in the FEIR file. Yeah, so. absolutely. And if there's anything we can do, anyone else on the board to help, because we know your hands are full, both of you, so we appreciate it. Let us know. Anything else, Mr. Masseri? Mr. Schultz. There's a couple of Thanksgiving-ish things. First of all, uh, congratulations to all the turkey trotters who went out there and it had to be eight degree weather and the winds were howling. And they still got about 1,700 people that went out and ran it. So that was great. And also, um, I want to thank the business community for lighting up Main Street and also the business community chamber of commerce for lighting up the common. They had their ceremony on Thanksgiving Sunday. And I understand they had a live nativity scene there and all kinds of stuff for kids and uh, another great event. Everything looks nice in town. And congratulating the Hornets on their win on Thanksgiving Day. Yes. Big win. Big win. Cool. Big win. Easy win. Taking back trickleys. That's quite a win, too. Anything else? No. Mr. Minipelli? Yeah, I would just echo that. I think that the turkey trots are so well organized. And even for those of us late registering for the walking portion, they still you could still go in, I think, a couple of days before to register. So it's just always well organized. It was freezing cold and but it was still fun and uh, it was a really great turnout for them despite the cold temperature so well done job well done yeah i only have one thing and it kind of goes along a little bit what we were talking about during the town administrator's report is i just want to remind the community that our plow drivers whether they're dpw workers or organic staff um sorry organic staff or contractors that we bring in um please be patient with them and understand that you know i get a lot of complaints at this time of year where snow gets in front of people's driveways or people get extra snow in their cul-de-sacs and you know we all understand but i hope people know in the community i can't emphasize this enough they're not out there to do it on purpose they don't have anywhere else to put the snow and i'm going to ask the community this year more than ever to rally around our contractors try to accommodate them the best you can um, if you see them out there, believe me, they've probably been out there for 14, 18 hours. Throw them a wave. If we can be a little more kindly and friendly towards our plow drivers, it'll just make this whole thing a lot easier. We had a real challenge this year. We had a hard time getting contractors to come and work in the community. And we take a tremendous amount of pride in our roads and keeping them clear so our residents can get out to their appointments and to the, live their lives. And I think we do it better than any other community. And as you know, if you heard us back here, we already voted uh, several months ago about increasing the rate to attract more contractors. But we also need to become a little friendlier community in regards to having respect for our plow drivers, to, to cut them a little bit of slack. And trust me when I tell you, they're not out there to upset people and plow in front of your driveways. As much as you may think it, it's not true. It's a challenging job. And so I just ask that we try to emphasize a little care this year uh, in this 2018-19 season of snow. And that's all I have for this evening, and I'll take a motion to adjourn. Mr. Let's Chairman, move yes. to adjourn. Second. Motion and second by Mr. Schultz. All those in favor? Aye. Aye.